Now then, I've come out here. I've come out here to Warner. You can see it written there on that thing, and I've, I've decided as I'll try and bring you a bit of Albertan culture, I suppose, or history or something. Just I thought it might be interesting to you instead of me waffling on about Land Rover all the time. I thought perhaps you could like to see a bit of Alberta as well. So what I've done is I've come out here to Warner, and you'll see here there's these big things behind me. They're called grain elevators. Uh, I'll go this way here. That one there that I'm pointing at, that one that says Alberta Pacific Grain, that was the middle of it was built in 1918. And then the outside bits were augmented in 1968 and there's been a couple of different orientations in that process and this one here is uh, a, a little uh, a little newer that's a 1940s and then this two here these two here you can't see uh, they're 1960s but there were more i used to come down here when i first come to canada i used to drive right by them uh, because i used to go to america which is down that way on this road it's on the highway and and I used to drive by these big grain elevators and uh, and they were a sort of a very and well, they still are a very iconic sort of site for 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 southern Alberta and Saskatchewan and, and they were designed by a chap called well two people Dart and Dunbar in north in New York in in the 19 uh, in the 1840s 1842 I think 1843 and they're a design prior to these things of course what happened is they used to make you know, they'd put all grain in a bag, a Hessian sack, I imagine, and, and they'd throw it on the shoulder and pack it up and away you go. But what these do, of course, is that you bring your, you bring your grain in your trailer or wherever you've got, and, and you'd bring them and then they'd suck it up sort of thing, and you'd put it on here and then it'd, a big elevator like them, things we used to have back home for conventional bales, you know, them little things you'd put it on, wouldn't you, in a big rubber band and take it up into, into a loft. Uh, and a bit like that sometimes they're auger fed and sometimes they're a big paddle affair and, and some of them are steam powered and some of them electric powered and, and all that kind of stuff and they're very oh, and they put it in a big in a big hopper basically and then train comes along you can see train track here in front can't you and train comes along and then you can see the big arms on side they put it into the train and that's how you load all that lot up basically it's just a way of getting your grain now to your farm more quickly so that they could speed up farmers getting paid for the stuff they made and collect it all together and, and it would be a more efficient kind of thing and it was a big it was a big shift 1843 uh, really revolutionized the way they managed grain in North America uh, bearing in mind that of course a lot of North America was also beef farming and they were in the in the period of splitting it up and, and closing it with you know getting rid of the rangers and all that like anyway i brought you out here and i don't know how long i've got because there's a, a, a massive black cloud over here but i brought you out here to show them because these things they're going canada isn't very good like america of holding on to its history and and these three wooden they're called they call what do they call them? They call them wood sided or wood cased or something. They call them um, grain elevators. I mean, there's new ones, obviously concrete ones. There's lots of them kicking about, but these these old wooden ones are uh, a fewer and far between. There's not so many of them, and they keep knocking them down. Where this blue one was, where this blue one is, there about five year ago, seven year ago, there used to be an old one, a very old one, built in 1939. And it, and it was one of the last in Canada to be built in its own design and there was only two of them built like that at 39 and, and, and it had a sort of a pyramidal roof I'll, I'll try and find a photograph of it and, and show you but the, uh, that were knocked down, it were pulled down and, and there were another three in between here there used to be seven here and I just met this old Mon Vern, his name is here he's, <laughs> he's, he's a bit of a local he's, he grew up next door, in, we were born in 1943, me and him have just had a chat, born in 1943 here, and he moved next door, presumably when he were older, so he's like, like we are back home, he's a local man, and he's travelled a long way, he's come hundred yard or more I guess. <laughs> he did tell me he had a job once in Milk River, which is about a ten mile down road, I guess he had to have his passport stamped when he left here. This, tiny little hamlet is, is exactly what it says it is there's there's happened hundred folk here and I don't know that it were ever any bigger than what it is what it is now 
Anyway, these buildings are iconic because for local people like Vern, they, they sort of they sort of identify uh, and and sort of mark what it is that they were all about: farming and grain production and. And they sort of, I mean, it's very flat here, as I've probably shown you, and you can see these back in the day, you'd be able to see these from 10 or 15 miles away, and each little hamlet, each little village would have one, and there's, there used to be seven here, as I said, uh, some very special ones that they pulled down, and they're non-protected because, <laughs> because Canada. Uh, and so there used to be seven here, and there's a the little village over that way called McGrath. It's got one, Coldale's got one, Nanton's got a couple that they are preserving and turning into being a, a museum. But these are operational, these are, they're working. And Vern tells me that this one here's got mustard seeds and peas in it. But traditionally, years ago, I guess they'd, they'd have um, grain, you know, carry grain, wheats and barleys and all that kind of stuff. But, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a newer building over there that's a cleaning plant and they make mustard flour out of mustard seeds and they pull the oil out to make mustard with, I guess, and then they, they use the rest to bind meat and burgers and things together, so your McDonald's and A&W's have a binding agent made out of that flour and all comes from here, so all this sort of stuff is very, it's part of who they are in southern Alberta and it's very sad to see these things taken down. There was a big hoo are about it in 2014 when they took these two down. <laughs> Take a good look, son. They ain't gonna last. They're knocking them down left and right. Take a good look, son. Next time we drive past, there may not even be one inside. Others up for closure, dynamite and dozers. Tradition ain't no match for progress. Scale sheds and gables, scrap wood for sale. That's the way things go these days, I guess. Sooner or later, the old elevators all will be coming down. Sooner or later, the old elevators all will be coming down. What's that in the picture your grandkids will ask? Standing in the history museum Small scale models, some old photographs Likely the only way they'll ever see them That's the day the congregation came to pay Commiserations talk when the grain reigns supreme Nostalgia soaked tears Wait till the dust clears It's the end of the line A sign of the times it seems Sooner or later, the old elevators all will be coming down. Sooner or later, the old elevators all will be coming down. Sooner or later, the old
Sooner or later The old elevators All will be coming down They're very special uh, and, and it's a shame they weren't preserved Especially when these other ones are still being used But this one here, this this green in here, I should point over that way so you can see. This middle one, the one that's built in 1918, that holds 45,000 imperial bushels. And then the other ones on the side, the far one, holds 65,000 imperial bushels. And then this other one here, I don't know how much that carries, but they've, they've moved them around a bit since, since sort of 1960. They've, they've had one at the back that they don't have anymore, and then they had one at the front which they don't have anymore. And then they've, this one, this Alberta Pacific grain, that one stood on its own over here, and then they moved that in the late 60s. And So they do move them about a bit, but as you can see, they, they sort of, these wooden case things are they're lovely they're made out of cedar you know and 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 they're obviously painted and some of them are painted very elaborately and some of them are orange and reds and and some are greens and blues and these are greens as you can see and they've, they've got a lot of history and they're very deeply rooted uh, in the canadian farming culture and what it is to be an albertan farmer i suppose and and a lot of people are, are very sad that they're getting i'll show you a photograph of this one in a bit the one that i'm pointing to that you can't see actually i'm going to send draw <laughs> providing it doesn't get struck by lightning from this big thunderhead that we've got here uh, i'm going to send drone up and i'll get some photographs off <laughs> hopefully uh, and this one here is looking a bit sad you know the, you can see the bow in the wood and the cedar as it's sinking a bit and, and it, like as is this one here one's a you know another coat of paint and whatever but and there have been a couple that have been restored and repainted and we've just come back from an holiday in Creston and they, they'd actually got uh, whatever they call it like uh, scaffolding around that and they look like they were fertiling about with it so I don't know whether that were getting a fresh coat of paint or whatever but you can imagine they don't look very big but they actually are quite they're quite a size and I imagine that it would be quite difficult to paint them you know it's a bit a bit like the fourth road bridge isn't it painting painting a job here you'd start on bottom and then by the time you got top you got to start all over again I guess but damage has been done and the older ones uh, the older ones have gone you know the, the older style and the ones that are unique or special they sadly they've been lost 